Hi, this is a short video on how I made a whale's tail bench start to finish. I also have an extended version of this same project on my channel that you can watch. It's much more detailed, a lot more film footage. But uh, for this one, we've just kept it short and sweet and uh, hope you enjoy it. The cardboard formation that is closest to us in this video is the fin which is attached to the first silhouette template in an attempt to form the body of the well. The cardboard that's mounted on the plywood is the first attempt of the center support for the body. Right now, I've got the tail itself. This is just a, a simple piece that I started with just to get, kind of give me the shape of the tail. And this right here now is getting to be the start of the 3D aspects of it. The tail itself is real slender on the back like a, like a sharp knife edge where the, the fin out here starts to get a little thicker. But as it goes it gets even thicker and right now I've just got it set up on a bucket to where it'll give me my 18 inches and I started out by looking at the body, the rest of the body, you know, that joins the tail. And this is what I came up with as far as the shape I was looking for. Now the interesting thing here is right here where this folds down, it's actually a point and it starts to get bigger to the... So some of these right here are short. And what I'm probably going to end up doing is figuring out exactly how long this section needs to be because these pieces by themselves, if they were long enough, could be the pieces that actually go right to the edge here. So it starts to zero and it goes as wide as this body. So these pieces really aren't appropriate right now. But that's the gig here is you've got to figure out the exact, you know, you can't just do this on a piece of paper. You've got to start playing it. And once you play it, oh, well, you know, that don't work. You unscrew it, you get it back on the drawing board there with some more cardboard, and you extend your pieces, you cut them, and you try it again. And you refine a template for this, this piece. Once it gets refined and it screws all together, it just locks in all that much better. So, This is a side view of the two center support templates, and what you see sticking out on the left and right are the screw tabs that fasten to the outer body templates, which then also fasten to the templated base. In this shot, I've added three more pieces of cardboard, one on the left side to form the body that's closest to us, one on the right side to form the body you can't see, and then if you'll notice underneath the fin going to the body, I've given that a taper there, which is just a small piece of cardboard. That'll bring the to total count of templates up to eight. I had a base template, the two center pieces, the two outer pieces that form the body, the two pieces that form the fin, and then the underside triangle piece that went from the fin to the body. Eight pieces in total. In this shot, all I've done is used a packing tape to literally cover all the cardboard so as if I was so inclined I could pull the cardboard completely out of the casting once I was done which I believe I did do so I'm going to expound on that later but at this point it's just a, a bond break so it doesn't stick to the cardboard. In these next two shots I started out by mudding the base and I let that sit overnight following day I came by and I mudded all areas with the exception of underneath the fin which is held up by a bucket in this shot you couldn't get the mud to stick up underneath there so I mudded all areas with that one area being the exception the next day I came by and I mudded underneath it but I'll go into that with the next film in this photo I had already taken the cardboard form out from the body and from the underside of the fin area and then proceeded to mud the underside of the fin to where the complete bench had been mudded. I then did some grinding to shape and smooth out the surface areas of the bench. Once I was happy with the shape, I then proceeded to polish the entire bench. From there, I stained it and I sealed it and then I installed it on my deck, which you can see my youngest son and my oldest grandson from him uh, sitting on the bench on my deck. After completing four benches using the cardboard template that I've already shown you, which took four days per bench to make, I modified the cardboard portion of the process down to what you see taped on the table now. Then I made a reusable form out of wood in a form that was cardboard to make the outline of the fin and it allowed me to mud the bench in one step. 
The result of this process left me with a very blocked fin that I had to spend quite a bit of time grinding the profile, rounding the edges, and, and forming it thereafter by grinder, which was unacceptable. To partially limit the need for so much grinding, I further modified my form with clay to more precisely form the underside of the fin as I shaped the top side of the pour with a trial to make the radius of the top as I applied the mud to the casting, which virtually took away all the need to grind or cut away so much excess mud, as was the case when I just filled the form full of mud. I then made further modifications to the form, making it much easier to use repeatedly. I substituted the clay with a silicone, and this allowed me to reuse that same silicone over and over again. I pre-coated the cardboard body with mud that I would allow to dry prior to casting a bench the next day. All these efforts were made in to try and cut down the time it took to make a bench. But then, after all that, I realized that if I were to make any real money at this, I'd have to create a full-blown mold. It was just taking me four days to produce a bench, and I was selling them for twelve fifty, and it wasn't just it wasn't making enough per day. And I also wanted to get this in the hands of my guys so that they could make it and not have that skill set needed to make a bench by freehanding it. So. I'll present you now with the process of the mold, making a prototype, making the mold, and then casting units from it. I began the molding process with the need to make a prototype of the bench. I needed to spend the time to detail this bench to the level of perfection that would fully be acceptable for every casting I made thereafter. In this photo, you can see that I placed rubber stops on the underside of the fin. This area inside the forms will allow me to leave an opening that will allow me to fill the fin portion of the casting as I as I make a bench. The bowl opening on the top is where I'd be able to fill the body of the casting as it's produced. In these photos, I've stained and sealed the bench complete, reinstalled the rubber stops on the underside of the fin, and added plywood to provide an area to form the rubber and the hard mold, which is to follow after the installation of the rubber. I then mounted the bench to a table to provide an area to form the rubber for the base of the mold that I'm going to make. Notice that I've placed plastic shower board under the base and underneath the fin to form the rubber and the hard mold to a surface that the rubber or the hard mold wouldn't be able to stick or bond to that I could easily pull it off. So that's why I've done that. In these photos, you'll see that I've already applied the rubber and it is now dried. The rubber stops are removed and the next step is to build the cement hard mold in segmentation over the rubber to capture the exacting formation. The rubber mold only really produces the texture. If you lay this rubber on the floor, it has no capability of retaining the formation. The hard mold captures the form and produces it again where the rubber produces the actual polished texture. In this photo, I have formed and oiled the first hard mold section over the fin area. I then mudded the first section that I formed and then proceeded to form the second section which covers the left half of the body. Then I cast the third section which covers the right half of the body, completing the hard mold in a three-piece section. In these photos, I'm just demolding the mold from the prototype. First, I remove the fin section, then the left body section, then the right body section, and then I remove the rubber portion of the mold. Done deal. Once I had that all accomplished, I had my mold, so I'm basically going to show you putting that back together, but I removed the forms and the plywood from the bench, the prototype, and then I patched the holes, touched up the stain and resealed it, and sold the bench to an art gallery which has it up for sale for $2,500. Here you can see it mounted. All right, in the following photos, I'm just showing you or demonstrating how I assemble the mold to be able to cast a bench from the mold. The process uh, to demold a casting is the exact reverse of putting the mold together. So uh, making a casting would be, you know, one way you're putting it together, the other way you're taking it apart. It's the exact opposite of one another. I will next show you the video footage of me demolding a casting so you can see the, the process complete. The 
In this footage, I just want to show that I'm removing the bolts. Okay, this side is the only side that's not molded. You can see the edge where the mold is all the way right there. So this is how I put mud into the fin. So it's molded from right here all the way under and all the way back over to the other side. So the top side's molded. This side requires a little bit of grinding to get rid of this slag because it's built up a little bit too much and we just knock that down with a grinder and then we polish this back side. And then right there, I've got a split that I got to deal with, and I make that disappear as well. But that's how the that's how it comes out. The mold comes that way and that way. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we put down these plastic boards so that when we pick up the mold, it can slide on the floor without scraping up my tar paper. I have tar paper laid on the floor as a protectant, and this will rip it. So this will allow it to slide without no problem. Next, I picked up this and I'm going to lower it down to where it should be to put the mold back together, which is going to give me a reference. This is so heavy I can't pick it up. So I lower it and get the other two pieces in line with it. All right, in this short clip, uh, we've got basically just the assembly of the mold, getting it ready to put back together. I've lowered the the fin piece just to give a reference to that base that first base piece then i'm going to put the rubber inside of it put the other half of the body on it bolt that together and then put the fin bolt it all together and flip it upside down so you'll see the entire process there but uh if we can assist you in you know products that we manufacture or services that we offer installation and or training for people who want to learn how to do the different techniques and processes that we've developed you can give us a call at 888-684-0086 or get on the website uh, email address is just simple info at faurocktraining.com it's been a pleasure uh, putting this together this project and this video and if i can assist you in any way don't hesitate to reach out to me thanks guys bye